Brent, let's start off with markets because you are fully involved with those, being an exporter. <laughs> yeah, uh, obviously wine for us, uh, and that's pretty strong at the moment. Uh, we had an interesting comment out from, I think it was Rabobank a couple of weeks ago, saying that we've got a one-trick pony in New Zealand, and we're Sauvignon Blanc, Sauvignon Blanc, Sauvignon Blanc. I thought, wow, you know, where are these, where are these commentators coming from? There is a large number of regions in the world that specialise in one variety. You've only got to look at, at France, for instance, you've, you've got the Burgundy, which is Pinot Noir. You've got the Chablis, which is Chardonnay. You've got Champagne, which is a mixture of the two. So it's not uncommon for regions that grow a variety very well to, to specialise in that variety. Mm. And there's no, no doubt what's happening in Marlborough. We have got a wine that is quite particular taste to that region and it's no other region grows Sauvignon Blanc quite like it. Uh, and you've got to then say, well, how big are we in the world scene? And we are very, very, very small, <laughs> very infinitesimally small. small. Yeah. And then you could look at how much more available space is there in Marlborough to plant a grape on? Well, we're down to, I think, less than 3,000 hectares, and that's getting some pretty, pretty marginal land even to grow that. And the more marginal you grow the land, the smaller the yield's going to be off those crops and the less viable it is anyway. So we're, we're very nearly at peak flow as far as the oil industry is concerned. From Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc is, is a minor variety, sorry, a minor player in the world. So it's just amazing what uh, the... The, the punters often say about things, which is rather interesting. So as far as exporters are concerned, I mean, are they, you reckon they're just about there, as far as bulk is concerned? Oh, I think we're, we're, we're very nearly at the maximum. Uh, we might have another 30, 40,000 tonnes available, 50,000 tonnes available in the future. But we're very nearly at the, at the maximum amount of stuff we can produce, uh, and that's now very much down to what Mother Nature deals up in any particular year, bearing in mind that a grapevine is a two-year plant. The sunlight on the bud region of the vine this year predetermines how much the, how big the bunch is going to be the following year. Mm. So a poor spring, poor flowering has an influence for two years, or a very good spring can have a very you know, nice sunny spring, nice weather, uh, can have a big influence on yield for the next year after that. So. Taking that into account, the, and vineyards are now becoming very adept to, to managing their crop for uh, the market and what their market share is. Mm. Uh, how's, how's the vint been? It's, we're slightly less, I think we're, everyone is slightly down on 2014, uh, which is the biggest vintage we ever had out of Marlborough. Uh, it won't be as good as the 13, 13 was an exceptional vintage, 14 was okay, um, and I think we'll be slightly better than 14, not as good as 13. Um, but it'll be okay. Um, any Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc's okay. And in fact, did, you've, you've got some good flavours coming through? Yes, we were all a bit worried about it. Um, we'd had a very, very unusual early autumn where the daylight temperature, the daytime temperature, the night temperature didn't vary very much. There was very, the nights just didn't cool down. Mm. And as a result, <coughs> the, the fruit flavour, which is built up by the change in temperature between the daytime and the nighttime, and the, the, the bigger that range, the more intense the fruit flavour is. And that doesn't matter what you're talking about, apples, pears, peaches, apricots. Uh, grapes are no different. And we were, we were getting this spell of weather for almost a month where there was you know, 20 degrees during or 25 degrees during the day and 18 degrees at night. Mm. It just wasn't cooling down. <clears throat> then it just changed. Uh, it started to cool down a little bit in the evening and we are late. We were about three weeks late in harvest, but that three weeks we needed to get the fruit flavours to come through and the weather cooperated in terms of you no know, we didn't have lousy weather which caused rain which caused disease so the, the fruit came in nice and clean so we looked in a very good it's a very good average crop for us this year. Great. Dollar and interest rates I mean they sort of go hand in hand don't they? Well I think we have to back up the bus a wee bit and look at really what's happening in the world at the moment. Uh, we're entering a very 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 interesting time and it's very easy for us to focus on the Donald Trumps of the world and say, well, how on earth did we get there? And commentators really worldwide, uh, particularly the government of the United States, but you know, they all wrote Trump off at the beginning of the year. Oh, he's not, even, he's not going to win hardly any of the primaries and he'll be gone before Super Tuesday. And <laughs> now we are in the middle of the year and he's still there. Yeah, and don't he put is, it in writing because he he's going to leave He's the down. front runner. And I think the commentators are focusing very, very heavily on the messenger 
and saying, what on earth are we doing with this? Rather than focusing on what the message is that has got him to where he is. And I think that is the very, very important thing that we as players in the world scene in terms of commerce have to be looking at. Why have we been able to get someone who has had some really way out ideas through to a position where he has got a 50-50 chance, he's the Republican, Hillary will be the Democrat, so there's a 50-50 chance that he'll actually make it. In fact, in some cases, I think because the punt has been so wrong up to date, I think he's probably got a better than even chance of making it. So how did it happen? Because it's the we're getting to a very interesting stage where the 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 voter in America is they believe have been let down by the system very badly. You become a nominee for the Republicans and Democrats by your company throwing a huge amount of money at the person who you think is going to win it, and that's how they run these super expensive primary campaigns. And the more money you put in, the more you expect to get some sort of handout, mm. some sort of break in business later on. And the rank and file are getting more and more and more disconnected to that because those people, the rich are getting richer and the poor certainly aren't getting any richer at mm. all. Mm. And so the gap is getting bigger and bigger. And they're saying, well, the politicians stand there have got no relevance to what we as people in the ground force are, are thinking about or working how we're, we're basically existing. And so there's that big disconnect starting to come through. And, it, and when you come with someone who's self-funded, I'm going to pay all my primary costs myself. Well, all of a sudden, oh, we can handle that. Well, he's, not, he's not going to be beholden to someone down the line. Mm, there's no so favor That's thing, yeah. number one. But number two uh, is that the world's starting to come pretty dissatisfied. When you've got half a percent interest rate that you have in the US at the moment, quarter percent interest rate you've got in the US at the moment, quarter half percent. The ma and pa, the baby boomers, have got to retirement. At the end of the day, they're saying, well, we're getting no interest. Any of the money mm -hmm. that we've saved mm -hmm. all our lives to have a nice retirement, a nice nest egg, is going nowhere. In fact, we're actually in some jurisdictions in the world, we're losing money, having the money in the bank. So one of the fastest growing industries in the world are safe making. So the, the people can keep their money at home because at least it's better than ha losing half a percent in the bank. And so we're getting this ridiculous situation where the people in power are stealing Ma and Pa's money because they've got virtually no interest rate. They're, they're, so corporates, trust funds, hedge funds are borrowing money at half a percent and shipping it down to New Zealand and getting two and a quarter percent. So they're making money on their money. So the Ma and Pa are saying, well, a hundred thousand, or two hundred thousand, or half a million we had put aside for our retirement. It's going nowhere. In fact, someone else is using it, not paying us for it, and making money. And so there's a big, big dissatisfaction out there that they're, going, they're facing retirement, having thought they'd worked hard to do all this work, it's going to be gone. And these and the people above them are literally stealing their money and they don't like it. So there's a big dissatisfaction. If someone stands up and says, I'm going to fix it, we're not going to have this rubbish, I'm a self-made millionaire, billionaire, we're going to fix it. They say, well, oh, okay, hmm, I like the sound of this. And so the disconnect between the punter out there, who the, the, the commentator out there saying, oh, Trump hasn't a dog show, and Ma and Pa, who sees their money going backwards every year, so you say, this is a real disconnect, and we really want to change that. And so that's why I think he's got a better than even chance of going there. Unbelievable, isn't it, when you think about it? But that dissatisfaction's going around the world. It's mm. not just America. Because a lot of the... See, there's no wage growth in any of the Western world. No wage growth. The best you go along and see your, the manager calls you in and they say, well, you've done a great job this last year, Rob. This is great, absolutely fantastic. Now, the good news is we're going to keep you on for another year. And you go out the door thinking, wow, this is great. <laughs> There's no 2%, 3%, 4%, 5% wage increase. Mm. You're just lucky to keep your job. And the reason is there's no upward pressure from the bottom in terms of supply, on the supply and demand curve. The, the businesses don't have to pay more and more to get staff because there's an inflow of 
of immigrants coming in at the lower end to keep on paying more, you know, to, to they, they're just keeping on feeding more and more. In New Zealand's case, Filipinos for the for the for the retirement centres or for the dairy farms, there's just a constant flow of them coming in at the bottom. So you don't have to pay the Kiwis more to get them to go and work on the dairy farms or work in the retirement villages. And you see what's going to happen in Europe over the next five years. A million, two million immigrants coming in, they'll work, some of them there is economic immigrants, they just want a job. Yeah, exactly. So they're prepared to take a job for very little wages. And then you'll start having some people say, and the more the right-leaning people say, well, I've lost my job to these immigrants. Well, you might not. You actually might have lost it to technology because there's a robot doing a job. But that's, they won't blame that. They'll blame the immigrant. And that's where you'll see more and more and more unrest start to come in, is people will blame the thing they can kick first. That's the immigrant. And so what's Donald Trump saying? All these cheap Mexicans coming across the borders, taking all your jobs. Same thing's happening in America, same thing's going to happen in Europe. We're in for a very, very interesting time. And then you look at the whole thing with Europe and the EU and Britain wanting to get out and other people wanting to well, do Brexit that. Brexit itself, well, that's the first one, <coughs> it's the first you know, cab off the rank. You're going to know that next month, what's going to happen there. And I'm, some pundits say, oh no, it's not going to bolt a show because there's too many immigrants living in, in the UK. They won't vote to exit. You know, they've got all these polls and works out. There's millions of them there because they've been able to walk across the border. So they will vote to stay in, they think. And others are saying, well, I think it's down to what the weather is on the day. <laughs> Which is, if it's a fine day, a big term out, yeah. we might be out. We might be out. Bureaucracy is a at, sad thing, isn't it, at well, times? It, but that's, and others are singing so close, it depends on where the weather is on the day, as to where enough people vote to make it actually happen. So we're getting very interesting there. But I have, I not, don't often agree with what Winnie Pizza said, but I thought his address to the House of Commons the other day, we told England, get out. Yes, mm. vote to get out. Fine. And then I saw reasons why he gave it, and it hadn't sort of occurred to me, but he said, well, go back to your roots. Go back to your Commonwealth. Immediately form a free trade agreement entirely in the Commonwealth. A third of the population of the world is in the former Commonwealth, or is in the Commonwealth. So automatically a trade, free trade, and free trade agreement between everyone in the Commonwealth, we're well, dealing with a third of the population. You're dealing with 17% of the gross turnover of the world is held by the Commonwealth. No longer are we just commodity producers out there sending it back to England to be manufactured and then sent back home, back out to New Zealand or various countries in the world. So the Commonwealth, if, if, if England leaves the EU and all the doom says, oh no, we're going to lose the trade to Europe, you're not going to lose the trade to Europe. But if you then change your focus back to what you knew, had before and focus on, and they've all got a commonality in the Commonwealth, hmm. you focus on that, then you've got one of the biggest trading partnerships in the world. So why wouldn't they leave? Exactly. exactly. Why wouldn't they leave? And as you said, they've got a market sitting right there. And being an island, they will shut the border to immigration. Simple as that. <laughs> you do make it sound so easy, Brent. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>